pulled Columbus's crew toward leaves from trees and fashioned cards to play a game. Perhaps they should have named it Coca Rica. Welcome back to the finals of the Costa Rica Classic in San Jose, Costa Rica. I'm Vince Van Patten, alongside my buddy Mike Sexton. And I'll tell you, my pick to win this tournament, R.A. Head, the Floridian 78-year-old player, has gone all in with King Jack of Diamonds against Luis Milani's King Queen of Spades. And it looks very bad right now for R.A. <laughs> well, he says his initials stand for ready for action. But I'm sorry to say that unless he gets very lucky right here, all he's going to be ready to do is leave. Okay, let's watch. Only jacks. No jack. How about a jack? No jack. A jack, man. A jack. And the flop comes 10-8-4. Flop is 10-8-4. Uh, R.A. Head is in big trouble right now. Next card. Next card. A six comes off. He's going to have to have a jack okay, or he's going to be eliminated. Nine. No, he's not going to do it. He does not do it. R.A. Head from Miami, Florida. Your pick to win, Vince, is out in the sixth position. Thank you. He thought Luis was making a move in that spot. He thought the King Jack of Diamonds was the best hand. Yep. He made a misread there. He was incorrect in his assessment. He had a King Jack of Diamonds. Okay. Luis had the best hand. The best hand held up. And our chip leader, the rich get richer. Now, Vince, I'm sure our viewers are wondering, is this a little suspicious? Does it look funny that the casino owner is still here at the final five and has a massive chip lead. Fact is, this is his passion. He loves to play these tournaments. And yes, it just shows you that an amateur, a guy who loves the game, who's not a professional player, can reach the final table and can do it. Yo voy a hacer. I'm going to give it everything I've got. If I've got to bite someone's ear like Mike Tyson, then I'm going to bite someone's ear. Now, that is the owner of Casinos Europa, the host of the Costa Rica Classic, threatening to bite the ear off a competitor. And if that's what it takes to win, Mike, good luck. Well, Luis Melanza is a colorful guy, but he puts on a tremendous tournament. Oh, yeah, sure I mean, does. the players love to come down here to Costa Rica. Our own Shauna Hyatt looked inside Casinos Europa, and she took her own walk on the wild side of poker. Poker in the wild. We're in Costa Rica, known for its volcanoes, jungles, and surf where some of the wildest poker games you'll ever see will happen right before your eyes. Those guys are crazy down there. Tom Luis has a huge chip lead going into the final table. Last call for the rebound. Rebound. Gets pretty wild down here, poker. Nestled in San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica, Casinos Europa has some of the wildest poker games in the world. While Costa Rica is known for its natural beauty and diverse wildlife, the poker tournaments at Casinos Europa are known for two things, service and camisas. Camisa! Camisa! Camisa Maximo, por favor. Camisa! <laughs> the key word that I've learned is Maximo Camisa. I don't want to hear that word. That's mean you lose your shirt. And I don't camisa. want to get that far down. <laughs> camisa. Camisa means rebuy in Spanish. And the $500 Costa Rica Classic is the only World Poker Tour event that allows rebuys. And there are a lot of them. Sign my life. <laughs> Seven. As the players struggle to stay in the game, the girls from the Toby modeling agencies keep the cervezas coming. With all it offers, Costa Rica has been described as a slice of poker heaven. The people are very friendly, very sociable, very respectful, ah, beautiful women. There are four women to every man. And at Casinos Europa, you don't have to wait until the afterlife to enjoy it. Just like America, Coca-Cola, beautiful women, and poker. This is all you need. In Costa Rica, pura means good life and this is a good life so Luis the casino owner is pushing him around and he's the major chip leader of this stack he's built his chips up to well over 200,000 now for a commanding lead action will be on Jamie he folds Jose has a jack nine different suits and folds 
Dewey folds, and here comes Luis. He's calling with a ten deuce of diamonds, a very famous poker hand. Well, that's uh, all Luis he's got. It's a ten deuce, and he's calling line. with it. Yes, Doyle Brunson, the great player, had ten deuce, made it very successful. Here's the flop. Flop is ace nine three, and look at Luis. He comes firing out there, seven thousand. He's looking to take command of this game. He's won the pot. You're right. He's just pushing it in. He's saying, hey, listen, guys, you know, I'm taking this game unless you have something good. Well, there was our man Luis picking up a pot with a 10 deuce of diamonds. He must think he's Doyle Brunson or something. No, you're right. They call him an amateur player. This guy is pushing these guys around. He's pushing the pros around. This guy is very impressive. Well, on the other hand, we have Dewey Tomko over there. Very conservative. Dewey's biding his time. Maybe he thinks he's an amateur. He's going to make mistakes later. That's when he's going to capitalize on him. Well, Dewey, I like to call him the phantom. You know, he keeps throwing away his hand. And once again, he throws away he his throws hand. throws it away. Luis throws it away. They all throw it away. The battle of the blinds. Jamie calls another 1,000 with a jack nine of club. So we're going to see a flop. Against an 8-3 of Jose's. Jamie, the small blind calls the 2,000. Jamie and Jose. So the flop comes queen, four hands. deuce, no help to either player. Now there's Eight. Jamie. He's bet 4,000. Jamie bets 4,000. And Jose, Jose calls, calls it. 4, Look at this play here. Jose has called 4,000 with a three and an eight. The now, ladies and gentlemen, he's not calling to try to make any kind of draw or any kind of hand. He's playing the man. He's playing here to try to take this pot away from this guy on 4th or 5th Street. Turn card is the six. The six stage. comes off. Now, Jamie checked. He's going to take a steal. Jamie Look at checks. this. He does. He's bet 10,000 at this pot. Bet Whoa. 10, and he's going to win it. This is an amazing play by Jose Rosencrantz right here. He called on the Jose flop with absolutely Rosencrantz. nothing, Vince. Yeah. I guess he was just setting him up, just waiting for one play. He was playing the person, not the hand. An amazing play by Jose Rosencrantz. I love the psychological part of poker. It's beautiful when you know what your opponent's thinking. Well, that was an amazing hand by Jose. Beautiful bluff. You know something? If you we weren't on the World Poker Tour, we wouldn't be seeing his cards. We'd probably think he has aces or kings or queens. That's a beautiful thing. When you can see these cards and see the instincts these players have to make those kind of plays, you can really see what championship poker is all about. Okay. There's Luis, King Deuce. He folds his hand. And now here comes Jaime. Jaime's picked up an ace jack. Looks like he's raising. Yes, he's come in for 6,000. Jose folds. Wow, notice Jose folded an ace nine there, Vince. Yes, he did. Now, Dewey, he's going to call because he has a pretty strong hand this time. Ace ten of hearts. Here comes Dewey. He's finally in the pot. He's got ace ten. He's up against ace jack, though. And the flop comes jack seven three. That's a big flop for Jaime. Oh, Top pair with an ace Jacks. kicker. Three Dewey checks it. Dewey checks. Here comes Jaime. He's bet 12,000. And Dewey Tomko lays his hand down. Jaime bets 10,000. Now, Vince, notice Dewey had a pretty reasonable hand, ace, ten of hearts. Some players would have moved all their chips in the middle. Now, Dewey Tomko, he likes to play after the flop. In other words, he likes to see flops and then play from there because he thinks he can outplay all his opponents from there. So you won't see him going in for all his chips when he's gambling before the flop. So the Phantom is not going to gamble today yet. Now we're talking about a guy here that used to teach kindergarten events. This guy was a kindergarten teacher for years. He gave up kindergarten to become a professional gambler and has been extremely successful at it. My biggest advantage with poker player is probably experience. Well, you know, you want to play solid, and that's what he does. He's waiting, 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 and uh, these pros have to change gears all the time. And I suspect when he starts getting some hands, he's going to change gears. So it's going to be up to Jamie first to act. Looks at his cards. He's got an ace. He's got an ace seven. With one of the two short stacks now. He's going to have to make a move here sometime. And it looks like he's making it right now for everything. He's going all in. He has moved all in on ace high. Jamie Ligator. Jose folds. Now look at this. Dewey. Dewey the Phantom has a pair of tens. He says count it down. Jamie Ligador just bet now all Jamie has more chips than Dewey, so if Dewey loses his pot, Dewey he'll be out of the tournament. But he's got two tens. He's on the short stack. I'll be very surprised if Dewey doesn't call this bit. Well, what are you waiting for? I mean, you got a pair of tens. Go with it. How many times do they have tens wired? It's pretty strong. Well, look, he, at, him, look at him concentrating. He knows Jamie. He gives him a lot of respect. He's the first one to come into the pot. But still, you're the short stack here in Dewey's spot. 
Looks to me like you almost have to play two tens here. Like you said before, he likes to look. He's throwing this away. I he can't believe this. He laid this hand down. Now that is pretty amazing to me too. Luis is throwing his cards away. That's going to do it. Jamie's won the pot with a strong all-in raise. Well, Louis Tomko sure made a big lay down there, Vince. Well, I give a lot of credit to Jamie. Went all in. He pushed his little friend, the Phantom Dewey, back into hiding. I'm not consistent at all. Some days I'm a pussycat and some days I'm a shark. Well, I know Dewey has a lot of respect for Jamie. Well, you got to recognize this. Good players can lay down big hands. Weak players call with most anything, but a good player can get away from a hand. Dewey decided to lay down that hand, and let's see what happens from here. Action's on Jose. He's got a 9-5. He folds. Now Dewey's got an 8-10. Now look at this. This is crazy. He's raising with this hand. Sure, he'll fold the 10s, but he's going to raise with an 8-10 offsuit. To 7,000 total. Well, he might be steaming a little bit here, Vince. Yeah. And he's going to win the pot. He's going to win the pot. You're right. Absolutely right. Steaming. He's, he's steaming a little bit. He realized, hey, I should have been with the 10s probably. And you know what? Even though I have nothing here, I'm going to raise it. I'm going to take a chance. I'm a little on tilt or steaming. And that means you're betting off of past emotions, mostly negative. Vince, if you are a professional poker player, there are no two ways about it. You must be able to control your emotions at the table. That's very true. But you know that, and I know that. But as Shauna Hyatt found out, talking to these professional poker players, they know that it's a lot easier said than done. Shauna. It's a jungle out there. If poker is a survival of the fittest, the player who controls his emotion is king. The player who does not ends up being a little lower on the food chain. When you lose a hand that you felt like you should win, that's your money going over to the other guy's stack. And there is an emotional connection. There is, there is a very primal thing that happens when your money is taken away from you. Sometimes you lose it. We're not robots here. We're people. It's an emotional game, no matter how you put it. Taking a seat at the poker table is the start of two battles. The first against your opponents, and the other against yourself. Lose a hand and you can come back. 